Fora TV. The world is thinking. Uh, the center-right coalition, the coalition I work with that is represented in the Wednesday meeting that Steve talked about, um, if you want to know why Republicans, conservatives, Reagan Republicans do what they do, why they show up to vote, why they show up to be active, uh, if they're around in a circle, everybody's in because on their vote-moving issue, what they want from the government is to be left alone. So you go around the circle, taxpayers, don't raise my taxes. Businessmen and women, leave my business uh, and my self-employment alone. There are businesses who want subsidies or want the government to kneecap uh, their competitor. They play for the other team. Uh, but around the table, if you just want to be left alone, if you're not asking for anything from the government and you're voting on that issue, uh, you're in. I'm on the board of the National Rifle Association. We're meeting this weekend in uh, Kentucky. We'll have 60,000 uh, folks there. Uh, again, the, the people who vote on the Second Amendment, who vote on the gun issue, what they want from the government is to be left alone. They don't want gun stamps. They don't want. Uh, the, they don't go knocking on your door, uh, telling you to, uh, uh, to telling you to be a hunter. The homeschooler movement. People who uh, want to educate their own children. Again, they don't ask for uh, approbation from the state. They want to be left alone. And the one that people tend to misunderstand is the. Uh, traditional values, conservatives, social conservatives, uh, religious right. Uh, if you want to know what moves their vote, not what moves some people's mouths, but what moves their vote uh, is it's a parents' rights movement. They want to practice their faith, raise their kids, and be left alone uh, to do that. You can get some, some of the leaders who make outrageous statements uh, on behalf of others, but if you want to know what moves actual votes and how it came into being, and part of the, sec the book goes into, uh, how the religious right got organized, not after uh, prayer was banned from public schools, not after Roe v. Wade, uh, but in the late 70s when it was believed that the Carter administration was going after Christian radio stations uh, through the FCC and the Fairness Doctrine uh, and Christian schools uh, to take away their tax-deductible status. And that's when all of the organizations got structured and people popped up uh, as a self-defense uh, uh, effort. So around the table, how you have all these people and you can say well in the New York Times commented in the 1980s or, or 1980 when Bush Reagan was running they said gee you got all these guys who go to church and all these guys who uh, have jobs and they'll be fighting any moment now uh, which missed a couple of things one the guy who goes to church doesn't irritate the guy who has a job they don't necessarily see each other and some people have jobs and go to church uh, and the coalition is actually held and deepened and strengthened rather than shattered or, or been some sort of fault line which outsiders and some of the guys on the right keep expecting to happen someday. And the reason is, is we have our uh, meeting in D.C. and there are 45 state capital versions of that uh, meeting from Tallahassee to Austin to Boston. Um, around the table, the guy is in and he's voting for the Republican because he wants his money left alone, he wants to make money all day, looks across the table at the guy who wants to go to church all day, looks across the table at the guy who wants to fondle his guns all day, um, and each one of them says, that's not how I'd spend my time. But it's not necessary that they all agree how they spend their time. It's just necessary they vote for the same candidate. Uh, and the Republican candidate stands in the middle and says, I'm going to leave your guns alone, your kids alone, your faith alone, your business alone, your money alone, your 401k alone, and then we're done and he has the votes. The, uh, but that's why it's a low maintenance coalition and why it's held. People, you know, you can argue, but, but if you ask the guys 20 questions, as Pat Buchanan did, I ask him 20 questions and I find that 70 percent uh, of people are not happy with free trade with China. And I, I know, as a member of the Board of the National Rifle Association, that many people who vote on the gun issue have what I consider the oddest views on free trade with China. They don't vote on that issue. So at one level, I don't care, and it's not important politically. I mean, I suppose I care in theory, but um, it's not important in terms of, of how people vote. And Pat, Pat Buchanan discovered that 70 percent of people were skeptics on free trade, and 70 percent of people thought there were too many immigrants, and he got 1 percent of the vote. Uh, because he didn't ask the second question, which is, and what issue are you voting on? Uh, and the answer was, not the one you just asked me about. Uh, and so part of what I talk about in the book is the importance for people who care about politics of understanding the difference between intensity and preference. The American people are very polite, and if you ask them 20 questions, if they have the time, they'll give you all 20 answers. That doesn't mean they vote on those 20 questions.